Now, the idempotent law, there are two ways to spell that word. So, idempotent, or you can say idempotent, but I usually use idempotent. So, the idempotent law says, okay, that if you have a set A, intersection set A, well, obviously, it will give you set A, and set A union set A will always be set A itself. It's a very simple and straightforward law. Now, the complement law, the complement law, says that the prime of A prime will always be A itself. And this is kind of the logic behind, like you want to say, the opposite of an opposite is the thing itself. So for example, the opposite of positive is negative, and the opposite of negative is positive. So the opposite of the opposite of positive is positive and the opposite of opposite of negative is negative. So that's the kind of logic behind this statement or the complement law. Now, the distributive law, just like in algebra, the distributive law, well, if you have, for example, A multiplied by B plus C, you always get AB plus AC. So we're distributing A onto B and C. Well, that also applies in sets. So if you have set A, intersection set B, union C, well, that means B A can be distributed among the B and the C, which makes it A, intersection B, union A intersection C. Well, that also applies if we have A union the intersection of B and C. Again, A will be distributed, and then we have A union B intersection A union C. Now, De Morgan's laws. So, it's very simply, if we have set A, the elements in set A and the elements in an empty set, the intersection is always an empty set. So, for example, let's say for example, And we'll set A, for example, one, two, three, four. Now, phi is an empty set. There's nothing inside that set. So what is common between A and the empty set? Well, it will always be one, two, three, four. And in the empty set, so there's nothing in common, so it will always be an empty set because there's nothing in common between both. So that's really what it means. OK. Let's put that away. Now, the union of set A and the universal set will always be the universal set. You can represent that using a Venn diagram. So let's say this is A, so the union of A and the universal set, which is everything inside the universal set. Well, we know when we're listing the elements of a set, we can't have the same element written twice. So let's say, for example, universal set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And A is the set of elements 1, 2, and 3. Now, if you put these 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, union 
one, two, three. So we list all the elements. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. So which means any set union, the universal set will always give the universal set. But we then GED came in. Um, and then a, a intersection B, the prime of A intersection B will always be A prime union B prime. And we demonstrated that using Venn diagrams. Let's, let's demonstrate that again. Here is set A, set B, and this is the universal set. Now, the intersection of A and B is this. So what we want is everything that is not in A and B at the same time. That's what A intersection B. Now let's try, okay, it's, this is here. Now let's try this. Here's set A, set B. This is the universal set. So A prime, which means everything that is not in A, that is everything that is not in A. All the elements not in A. And let's shade all the elements that are not in B. That's all the elements that are not in B. So you will see that this area has not been shaded, so this is not included. So the same as this. We wanted all the green region except the one in the middle, the intersection of A and B. So we want everything in the set other than the intersection of A and B. Now let's move on to um, very similar law, which is if we have the union of A and B prime, so all the elements that are not in A or B will be all the elements that are not in A and all the elements that are not in B. Let's see that in a Venn diagram to demonstrate what that means. Okay, let's first shade A union B. So A union B is, let's shade it in pink. So that's A union B. This is A union B. So what we want is A union B prime. So anything that is not A union B Let's do that in green. So everything that is not in A union B. Now let's try it another way and see how this law applies. Here is A and B. So A prime, so that means Anything that is not in A, let's shade that with pink. Everything that is not in A, and now we want intersection. So we're looking for overlap between, so this is everything not in A. The overlap between the two regions is the region we are concerned with. <coughs> so now let's shade everything that is not in B. Let's shade it with green. Everything that is not in B. Here is everything that is not in B. And you see the overlap of both colors is the same as the shaded green region in the other Venn diagram, in the, in the first Venn diagram. 
So that means that the intersection, which is this, this is the intersection. Let's shade it with maybe uh, white. Okay, so this is the intersection of both. Everything, these are all overlapping regions. So everything that is not inside A or B. Same as here. Everything that is not in A or B. Now, finally, the absorption law. Now, the, the absorption law is, is not stated in your textbook, okay? But it's very important to know. So let's go over that one. It simply means all the elements in A union, so all the elements in A, or all the elements that are not in A will eventually add up to the universal set. Now, how does that look like in a Venn diagram? So let's say this is A. So if I'm shading A, A would be this pink region. So when we're looking at union, that means we want this or that, so all of them. And then A prime would be, let's do that in green light green. So this is A prime. Anything that is not in A, that is everything that is not in A. Now union means this or that. So it means all the elements that are in A and all the elements that are not in A, which means all the elements in the universal set. Boy, um, that one will get how to apply the laws we just discussed to these types of questions. Now I want to prove that A union B union A prime will always be the universal set for all values of B. Okay, for all B. For all elements of B. Now associative law. Let's start with the associative law. Associative law بيقول لي إيه؟ إن أنا الترتيب مش هيفرق. يعني أنا ممكن أكتب A union B union A prime. وممكن أقدر أكتبها A union A prime union B. كويس. أستخدم مين فيهم؟ والله أنا شايف إن أنا لو استخدمت ده هيكون أحسن. ليه؟ لأن A union A prime لو تفتكروا ده الـ absorption law. الـ absorption law بيقول لي إيه؟ إن A union A prime هيديني الـ universal set. طيب وإيه تاني؟ وكمان universal set union B will always be universal set لأن B is a subset يبقى احنا كده using the associative law and the absorption law قدرنا ان احنا ايه ان احنا نطلع الكلام ده in the proof in, the, in the A union B union A prime would be the universal set. But which laws would apply here? I would first use the associative law. Shmana, then I the intersection, we'll go in brackets intersection, and the order would not matter. What I would choose, I would choose, you can have A intersection B, or A intersection A prime. What I would do is I would choose A intersection A prime. Shmana. Because the my D mana A mana el elements in set A. Why is the shuf A will overlap my elements that are not in set A? For obviously this is equal to phi. Yibana hakib hakid A intersection A prime. 
intersection B, A intersection A prime D phi, intersection B according to De Morgan's law, if a A set with intersection beta A set ma an empty set will always be an empty set. Okay, um, now in question 2c, whenever you see a set union another two sets in brackets or the other way around, so if it was maybe um, A intersection B union A prime. So we have outside the brackets an operation inside the brackets, a different operation, we can always use the distributive law. Now let's see how that works out. Well, the thing is, we have to keep trying things out. So let's distribute A inside the brackets. So that makes A union B, and that will intersect A union A prime. Now the reason is that I spotted that A union A prime is the, this is the absorption law and this is the universal set. This part is the universal set because anything, all elements in A and all elements that are not in A just represent everything basically. Now A union B Okay, let's put these in brackets just to clarify things. Now, A union B is A union B. Now, I want A union B intersecting with the universal set. Now, we know that anything will intersect the universal set at that specific thing. So, you know, for example, if the universal set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and A union B is, let's say, 1, 2, 3, and 4, now the overlap, the common elements in both are basically the 1, 2, 3, and 4, just to, just to take an example. So, the answer of A union B intersection U will always be A union B.
Now, let's check out this question, question 2e. Whenever I see brackets, I'm thinking to myself, okay, uh, uh, probably I'll have to use the associative or the distributive property. Well, associative property seems not applicable because we have different operations, and the associative property requires that we have all the same operations. For example, um, a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus b uh oh a plus b plus c but however we have different um, operations so we can apply the distributive property so if we have a b plus c equals a b plus a c or a plus b because we have two brackets multiplied by for example c plus d we get a multiplied by c plus d okay and that is plus plus b multiplied by c plus d now this seems to work well with our situation here so the distributive property we want the union of a intersecting this bracket and B intersecting this bracket. So we have a union here and we have now two brackets. Let's, because we will have two products, so to speak. So A intersection A prime intersection B prime. And then I'm gonna do B with the brackets B intersection A prime and B prime now it seems that again we have brackets in inside both brackets so we can just use here because all the operations inside are intersection there are the same operations operators so we can use the associative property because if we do a intersection a prime which is something we already know that's a phi and that would intersect b right so phi intersection B is just phi. Now we want the union of that with OK. Now we can do B and B prime. The intersection of B and B prime. So I want the overlap between all the elements in B and all the elements that are not in B. Obviously, that's an empty set. And that would intersect A prime. So we did this, and then OK. Now, phi, the empty set intersecting any set in the world will always be an empty set. Again, the intersection of sets with an empty set is one of the laws of De Morgan's law. So, De Morgan's law. So here we use the distributive property. Let me let me clarify that. Here we use the distributive property, and here we use the associative property. And then we used De Morgan's law. Now that we have reached um, our final question, which looks like maybe a little bit intimidating, but you know, again, let's look at both sides separately. So we have a left-hand side and a right-hand side. Let's let's see what we can do about the left-hand side. Again, we have two brackets. So it seems like. 
we could think of associative or distributed properties or laws. Now, it seems like we have different operators. So we have a union, intersection, and a union. So this is basically the intersection of two unions. Okay, now we can apply the distributed property. So I'm gonna distribute A first. So A, intersection, the union of the two sets C and D. Now that's one part. Now that would intersect, oh, that would be the union because we're going to use the union between A and B. So that's the union of B intersecting the union of C and D. Now, it looks like we have to use the distributive law just another time. Why? Because, again, we have different operators inside the brackets. Okay, now let's do the left hand side. So we're going to distribute the A. So A union C and that would intersect A uh, that would intersect we did oh, so yeah, that would intersect A union B. That's the first part. Now we have a union here. And then we're going to distribute again the other brackets. So we have B, intersection C. Put these in brackets. And then we do union B, intersection D. What I did was I distributed the B. Now, I'm going to try to think of a way so I can have all the operators in one bracket so that I can come back to this, so I can arrive at the right-hand side. Now, when we finally arrive at question, the last question, exercise two. When we finally arrive at the last question, I'll ask you to investigate the answer for this one. Now, here is a hint, okay? First of all, when we have two expressions on the right-hand side and the left-hand side of an equation, we can first take one side of the equation and transform it into the other side. So you can either use the left-hand side and transform it to the right-hand side, or you can just use the right-hand side to transform it into the left-hand side. Here's another hint you might have to use, since we have plenty of brackets, remember, you will think of the associative and distributive properties. Well, you might have to use the Morgan's Law, the Morgan's Laws, and, well, um, you're more than welcome to work in groups, and um, let's see if you can present this problem and the solution to this uh, to this problem. And um, I'll see you later.